So uh, we found this little building around the corner from Maxella. It's like 3,500 square feet. It was a frame stucco building. And so I then decided to keep that shop. I kept the lease on that shop myself and started Stetson Visual Services the first time in that little shop. And really ran it just for one summer and did stuff like low budget stuff like Ice Pirates and Buckaroo Banzai was in that shop. And then Richard Edlin did the deal with Doug Trumbull, refired EEG, turned it into Boss Film, and started up work on 2010 and Ghostbusters. During that summer, though, uh, one of the shows we did was Buckaroo Banzai with Greg Jean. And Greg said he had this job offer. He didn't want to do the whole thing, but he'd take it if I'd do the good guys and he did the bad guys. And so basically that's the way we split up the show. <laughs> Well, I wasn't really sure what was good and what was bad. They were all sort of in between somewhere, but um, uh, it was a lot of fun. The mothership, I, I think it was at least about five or six feet. Because I remember there was a guy in the back just whacking away at it. <laughs> Basically, I think it was started out as a big piece of uh, bead foam, and we took parts of it away until we got the shape that was illustrated, and we sort of worked it that way. I think at the end we just hard shell coated it. That's why we like the bead foam, because you could take it away and not make a cavity, but it would actually make an extruded bubble. We said, oh, let's just go with that and run some wires in there for veins and things like that. The Electroid uh, swooper, you didn't see that much, but we spent a lot of time working on those things, too. Uh, on Buckaroo Banzai, once again, you know, my job was, was the painter. And other people would paint, too. We, David Schwartz was in the shop, David's a great painter, but you know, for his personal artwork, but uh, as a as a model painter too. So I remember uh, I, David and I, uh, painted and built this brick wall that the ship crashes through, when the guys take off, and uh, and that ship itself was a really interesting uh, miniature to paint. It was very organic, sort of, you know, uh, the, the, in the story it was like grown over. A framework of some sort of material that these alien guys had that they grew their ship with so it was real organic and uh, it was very fun to paint. But I sort of remember Ricardo handing me this little shell, it's about this big, and uh, asking me uh, to build the spaceship just like this shell. It had all those crazy spikes on it and everything else. But as, as Ron described to you, you know, he said, imagine it like they built this framework and then grew this thing over this framework. So we had little bits of uh, structural elements sort of still peeking through. But it was mostly just like make it look like the shell. My third favorite thing that I'd ever built was the oscillation overthruster for Buckaroo Bonsai. It was really fun to build and it was a very creative job for me because we got drawings in from the art department that were really nonsense drawings. It could not be built because there were perspective errors in it. It just, you couldn't build that. Um, at least it wouldn't look like that from anything other than the drawing angle. So I kind of redesigned it and you know, kept the spirit of the design and tried to keep as much of the design in it as possible but actually make it something that would be practical to build. So I created this little thing and made the push buttons and it lit up a little bit inside and also uh, got to dress the gimbal that it snaps into uh, with LEDs and just greebles and nonsense detail and the carrying case that it's kept in, you know, like this sort of jewel case they carry it around in. And it was really fun to make, but it was a very short project. I think I spent like a week and a half on the thing uh, and then went on to other, other assignments. Uh, but I think that prop has more notoriety for people than just about anything I've built. Bobby Johnston was the machinist on that project and many others that we did. Unfortunately, he's passed on now and we miss him. But the uh, mechanism in the oscillation overthruster was such that you could push a button and something else would pop out and light up or blink and it was all battery powered inside and it was mechanically linked together and, and Bobby created that internal mechanism and then I, I made all the dressing pieces for it and built it into the shell, the fiberglass casting of it. For years I had a mold of that thing and I'd make oscillation overthrusters for friends for Christmas and things like that. <laughs> Don't know where that mold is now.